Donald Trump's victory in the 2016 presidential race left a lot of people scratching their heads wondering how it could have happened. How did such an offensive man become the Republican nominee and win? It's really quite simple. Trump fought to win in a world where the aggressor sets the rules. Instead of playing by the media's rules like every other candidate, which means be nice, agree to get along, and compromise, he attacked and vowed to defeat his opponents. Many voters were tired of the polite surrender of the professional politicians who smile and give smooth words to explain why, once in office, they continually fail to accomplish what they promised while running for election. So his supporters, rather than being repelled, were drawn to his crude bluster and in-your-face attitude. They said, we played the game by their rules for decades, and what do we have to show for it? Let's at least support the guy who is beating them at their own game. Plus, they knew the smooth words of the professional politicians were a distraction while they stabbed the American people in the back and emptied their wallets. Please remember, an American missionary is not a political commentary, so this is not about Trump himself, but about lessons Christians can learn from observing the political realm. And so, Christians, of all people, shouldn't be surprised by the nastiness of politics because the world is governed by the aggressive use of force. After all, Satan, the prince of this world, John 12, 31, aggressively introduced the evil application of force by going after Eve, Genesis 3. In our studies of Israel, we've seen ruler after ruler take over by killing his predecessor. Zechariah, the son of prosperous Jeroboam II, only lasted six months before Shalom killed him in public, 2 Kings 15, verse 7 only to be killed a month later by Menachem, 2 Kings 15, verse 14. Menachem, the last king of Israel to die peacefully in his sleep, lasted 10 years, but his son, Pekahiah, only lasted two years before he was murdered by his general, Pekah, 2 Kings 15, verses 17 through 26. Even as the nation's time was running out, the pattern continued when Pekah was killed by Hoshea, who, along with the nation, fell to Assyria nine years later, 2 Kings 15, verse 30, and 17, verses 1 through 6. Thankfully, America hasn't fallen that low yet, though it may be getting close. Regardless, those of us who claim to follow King Jesus need to quit thinking we can save this nation if we just elect the right man or woman. Even though our king has already come to earth and defeated him, Hebrews 2, 14 and 15, we're still at war with the prince of this world, Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. But the weapons of our warfare are not like those of the world. We can't use the sword of the state to force people to follow Jesus. We can only use his word to capture their hearts and minds, 2 Corinthians 10, 1 through 6. We're not going to save America but we can save Americans through the gospel, Romans 1, 16. So instead of trusting in blustering bullies or smooth liars to save America, learn to trust Jesus, the one and only Savior. Thank you for watching Morning Minutes in the Bible on An American Missionary. Until next time, this is James McClenney hoping you have a great day.